So this question comes from the Xano community talking about authorizing make.com to make an call into a Xano endpoint. And I think this is a great use case for Xano where you can compose it into one of these other uh, workflow systems like Zapier or like make or like even code that you might be running uh, on another server. And you could have Xano take care of some concern that involves, you know, doing complex data manipulation and working with Xano database, whatever it might be. Now, when you're doing this kind of thing, it probably behooves you to use more of an API key type method where you have, you know, one key or a set of keys that you're allowing the other machine to use to authenticate itself. But you don't want to use the same kind of, you know, username, password, given temporary token that's built into Xano. So Xano provides you, okay, so I can add API endpoints, start from scratch, do test get. And the, and, and here is where I might either want to have, uh, be able to use built Xano's built-in authentication. Now, the tricky thing about Xano's built-in authentication is it uses cryptography and that can be very, very fast, but it has some side effects. One is that it will, in, in the normal course of events, you'd sign in with the username and password. It would create a token for you. And then that token is something you'd pass through the authorization header, but that, and, and Xana will take care of authenticating that for you, but it will only do it as long as that token is still valid. Now you could set the expiration date to be relatively short and then die, or you can set the expiration date to be a long one, but that creates its own kinds of problems because then you can't revoke it. It becomes a token that's going to be usable by anyone who happens to get their hands on it. And when we're making API keys, it's, it, it kind of benefits us to want them to be a little more terse and also to be something that we can revoke at a later time. So as a result, we don't necessarily want to use the built-in authentication uh, that comes with Xano. So let's say, uh, we'll, we'll say save here. And because if we were to make uh, a built-in, use built-in authentication from Xano, we would use something like the, you know, the security functions where we can create an authentication token, the kind that goes built in with Xano. And here we can set what the expiration time is going to be. The tricky thing is we can't actually revoke it. Uh, so it's good for as long as this expiration time is. So either it's temporary, we need to keep reissuing them, or it is long-term and irrevocable, which creates a big old security hole. So what's the alternative? Let's not use this. And delete. Great. So instead, what we want to do is use an API token that is going to be something that we have control over. So we would probably do something along the lines of this, where we would say, you know, let's just do a name relation. I'm going to say, we'll create a variable and we'll call it, you know, a token and we'll call it, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Just some string that like I know and you know, but the third party doesn't know. And then we can make sure that the request that came in is going to make use of this. And I can say plus, and I can do a, you know, I, I can do a check, right? Where I can do that by using a security function, which is under utility. It's called precondition. And in the precondition, we can set up a test. And this will precondition is going to allow us to continue and be happy only if the test passes. It will, and it will set an error if the test fails. So here, what I want to do is we want to say that the token is equal to the underneath the environment variables. And this is actually where things get kind of interesting. We can take a look at the headers and the, in fact, let's, let, let's, let's step back for a second here. Let's, we'll, we'll say this is going to be uh, the error type will be unauthorized in the event this fails, but we'll, we'll come back to it. Let's, let's take a look at what these are here. We're going to say, let's take a look at the headers. Do, 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 do. And that's going to be under, well, let's just do a utility function and we will do a stop and debug of our headers underneath environment and taking a look at uh, the HTTP headers. Save. Great. So now I'm going to, in order to do this, we want to look at me outside. Run and debug isn't nearly as useful when you're looking at the headers that are going to come in with a web request. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the publish. And I'm just going to say publish it, which will make it publicly accessible. Copy this endpoint URL and go over to Postman. Postman is a great little tool for uh, testing out web requests. And I'm going to say send. And now you can see the body that came back. That says it came back with a stop and debug. And the stop and debug has a certain payload. And the payload is actually all of these headers I would have sent over, right? Except encoding, Postman token, et cetera. 
So what if we did an authorization? Let's do authorization using an API key. And classically, that's going to be based on a key called like X uh, dash API key. And I'll say one, two, three, four, five, right? And I will say here, let's send that. See, it now it shows, and now basically our Xano has received an X API key of one, two, three, four, five. Now, if I want to really do something with that, then what I could do here is say data manipulation, and I would say create variable, and I could say CA. And I will say this is going to be coming from the HP headers dot X API. What's it called? Key. I'll say save and I'll say stop and debug, not HTTP headers, but the receive token. And good, 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 good. Okay, so let's do a uh, publish of that again. And let's see how it looks when we actually received it through Postman. Okay, so now, so basically every time I send something with X API key of one, two, three, three, four, five, it knows that it came back as one, two, three, three, four, five. So let, let, let's bring this down to the next problem here, which is we want our to our precondition to make use of that. So X API key. Remember, we can use dot syntax in Xano to get a member when we know that member is going to exist. And of course, if there is no X API key, then it'll explode using something else. And we have a set here that in the event, you know, that in the event the key does not match, remember, if the, if, the, if the test fails, then it will say bad API key. And it will send me back an unauthorized, uh, which I think is a 401 or a 403. I'll do publish. Now let's go see what we go for in Postman. Oh, it still has a stop and debug in it. And yep, here it is. Okay, let's get rid of that. And publish and publish. Okay, good. That was giving a very different kind of error. Four hundred four not found. Why would it say four hundred four not found? It's called test get. Get. Oh, the var one. Uh, okay, the, the reason it's doing that is because down here it's saying var one. So let's just have it say, hello, error. Okay. That'll probably work. Mm -hmm. And then let's also turn on the precondition. So that, look, it will say hello there in the event that it's successful. And it will say, and it should fail out if the token was not matched. to publish. publish send now it says bad api key the reason it says bad api key is because the api key i sent is one two three three four five and the api key it's looking for is one two three four five six seven eight so what if i tell postman to use one two three four five six seven eight i say send oh and it gives me a good answer okay so now we have the crux of how uh, authentication can work, right? We have a variable. It receives, it returns the, you know, we, 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 which is going to be the one token we want to use. It's going to get the receive token here to, and then compare the two to say, does this match this? And if it does, hooray, it will give you a good answer. Now, that's fine for, but it has two problems. The first is we've hard coded the token, and the second, perhaps more severe, is we've done it only in one endpoint. So what happens later on when I want to make something else? I want to create another API endpoint and I call it, you know, test get two, right? And do I have to go repeat all that code? And the answer is basically no. So what I can do here is go to my test get and say, let's, 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 let's grab a few of these things. Uh -huh. And these guys here, this token, 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 we're going to say, use a very cool little new piece of functionality in Xano called convert to function. And I can take all three of those things. I'm going to say, 
you know, right? And then what that does is combine them all into auth with API key. And this becomes a new little function. And the cool thing is this function doesn't require any inputs and frankly, it doesn't even really use any outputs. It's just going to basically throw in the event that I don't have a good API token, right? So let's go, let's go back here. I have, you know, this off of API key, and publish this, publish. And now I can run my test kit again, and I'm just going to make it a bad key. See, and it gives me a bad key error. If I put in a good key, it puts in a good key error. And that's really convenient. So now I've got this guy. And now the next thing I'm going to do is go up to, is say, back and say, well, what about using test get two? And test get two right now, of course, works, you know, all the time, right? It'll, it'll ignore the header entirely. But let's set it with a bad API key. And it still says null. So now what I can do is just do add a custom function. Which will include. And hey, what, what what did I call that thing? <laughs> a API off of API key. Oh. <clears throat> that little search thing for control F, by the way. Uh, so now you see it takes no inputs, but it will die in the event that it doesn't work. So I go into here and I say go into auth test two. And I run it again and see, hey, it says bad API key. And then I'll say good API key. Basically, I'll just say, give me not very much inf interesting information at all. When, right right now it returns a func one, which it doesn't really need to do. We can just say return string success. Publish that, publish. Don't need to run debug because of the nature of this. And we'll say run. And it says success, right? Again, if I just have a bad API key. Okay, that was problem number one. Problem number one is how do we use the same thing across multiple endpoints? You can just drop this in and it will actually not need any more information. I can then go do other things or whatever it might be after this in my function stack because it will not bother me anymore with it. So that's great in terms of being able to use it across many of my endpoints. It'd be even nicer if it could be outside the function stack, but it's inside the function stack. It's one line. It has neither inputs nor outputs. I can drop it and forget about it. And then that way, everybody's going to use the same code. But the second problem that I have, remember how I talked about how the, uh, one of the problems with those, you know, cryptographic tokens that Zen knows how to use is that they require, is that they, they, they create the potential of a security hole. They last forever. Now, of course, I can manually turn this over in here, but what if I want to have like a rotating list of good keys that I want to make use of? I could put that into an environment variable. I could put that into Redis, but you know, database is actually kind of good for this job. So let's just make a new one. We'll call it, you know, auth keys. And we'll have no CRUD endpoints for it. Thank you. And I will just call it API key. Now, this is cool. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, you know, we'll put in the old one that we had, which is one actually, we'll make sure we don't even use the old one. That way we'll know six, seven, eight, nine. And, and by the way, there's, there's no reason why it has to be any, you know, particular set of key of, you know, you know, letters, numbers, whatever. It could be anything you want it to be. All these API keys will work as long as they are still set to be successful in here. And, and that way we can allow multiple them to exist and you can delete them at any time. You can even have additional properties with them. Like if you want to have, you know, what, what, you know, you, you know, permission or whatever other payload you want to have go along with it. And that's for, you know, more advanced stuff or a future video or what have you. But the idea here is that I can have an API key and I could go back to my, you know, API. Yeah and go back down to my YouTube and go to my test. And uh, well, we'll just go to test get for a second. And we'll say, uh, I don't know why this is not yet published. But we'll, oh, this thing. Don't worry about it. We'll go back and off with API key. And and here, instead of saying, well, we, are, we know that we received a certain token from the header, but what do you want to work with? And we're going to do instead, we're just going to do a database request where we're going to get a record from auth keys 
we're not matching on the idea. We're going to match on the API key itself where it equals receive token. See, that way we're going to see if there is a good API key that matches the code that we just got. And we will say save. In fact, there's an even better way of doing this. Let me pause it for a second. It's something that not as many people use in Xano is a, a database request and called has record. See, instead of actually returning the whole record, this returns as true or false based on whether it exists. And for our purposes right now, that's all we really care about. I'm going to say API key, and I'm going to say the value is going to need to receive token. Cool. And now this guy doesn't even need to exist because we don't need that API token. And then the, and the precondition is actually much simpler now. Precondition no longer needs to be that. The precondition is just going to be that whether or not we found the auth key is one. This is just going to be a true or a false. And we'll just ask whether it is true. It only works if it is found. By the way, me typing in true sort of automatically detects this is supposed to be the Boolean true. And that, that should have basically the same effect. I don't know why it's running. I get all variables in here. I don't care about that. All right. So now it will check to what, what we got from API key. It will run this if it has a record, and it will give me a precondition. Fantastic. We'll say save that. And we will say publish that and publish. One of the very cool things here is that this now gets automatically applied to all of my endpoints all at the same time, right? I don't need to do, I don't need to go edit each of those endpoints based on the change I just made. So let's send this. Why it's completing this route. Oh, I see why. Okay, so let's trash that. Let's trash that. Right, no response. Publish, publish. Yeah, that makes better sense. And now we will go back over to here and we'll say send. Okay, now it says bad API key. Now remember one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the previous version of the video? Hey, that worked. Oh, wait, but it doesn't work anymore. Why doesn't it work anymore? Because if I go back over to my database, look at my auth keys, I don't have that. So let's put in this guy instead. Copy that. And use that in my X API key. Send. See, now it works. Furthermore, I could use anything else that was also in here. All right, so it doesn't need to look like this little numbers with dashes thing. It can look like whatever else I need. Great. But if it doesn't look like it, or if it has any corruption inside, I just took out two characters in the middle. Now it says I'm bad again. So this now gives us a great deal of flexibility on both dimensions. We have centralized. We have centralized the concern of how to authenticate our endpoints by putting them into a single function that really only has three steps here. Now, the first step is to extract the receive token from the HTTP headers. And by the way, you can call the header key whatever you want. XAPI key is a convention. People know to look for it. And it, it's much easier to use than bearer authentication because that way you don't have to have that additional keyword in your authorization header. But you can do it either way. It's just a question of doing some more text manipulation. You just check to make sure that it exists in your database, which allows you to have multiple API keys going all at the same time. And just by deleting them from that database, you can invalidate one if it gets too old or your words compromised or anything along those lines. And then finally, you can set up this precondition so that to make sure that it only will fire when, when it works. So I actually think this is great for people who are using like the free plan to work with like the original, you know, use case of how do I do this with make, because it allows you to securely have a conversation with make without having to go set up users or using Xano as your central uh, store of truth or any of that stuff to do the data manipulation part that it's really, really good at. And that and by being able to create this sort of central concern and be able to have multiple endpoints that are all doing that job and being able to have rotating tokens, it all gets much easier to work with. And that allows us to extract the power from Xano in a way that allows the very no code way to do it on the easy path. All right, we've done the hard things the easy way. Hopefully this is helpful to you. And this is the kind of thing we do all the time over at State Change. But I hope on YouTube session, it was useful for you today.